We acknowledge that we meet and work on Treaty 1 lands, the original territories of the Anishinaabe, Cree, OJ Cree, Dakota, Lakota, Diné peoples, and the homeland of the Red River Métis. We also acknowledge Show Lake 40 First Nation, who generously provide us with clean drinking water. St. Paul's proudly acknowledges our role in the many relationships that make up our home and commit to a spirit of reconciliation for the future. Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening. I welcome you all to our service this evening for Monday, Thursday, and we're um, yeah we're going to continue on with the opening address, not an opening hymn. This is the day that Christ, the Lamb of God, gave Himself into the hands of those who would slay Him. This is the day that Christ gathered with His disciples in the upper room. This is the day that Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done for us. This is the day that Christ our God gave us this holy feast, that we will eat this bread and drink this cup, may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection, and that the last day may reign with him in heaven. And we'll join in singing those who see light. Yeah. <clears throat>
together we pray. O God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has left to us this meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and his blood. May we who celebrate this sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. Thanks. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish and a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until morning. Anything that remains until morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Listen for the word of God coming to us in Scripture. Our, Our hearts, hearts and, and minds are open. open.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is God's word coming to us in Scripture. Our hearts, Our hearts and minds are open. festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, 
not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so I now say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you, should, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Should be a homily before walking the feet, <laughs> but I don't mind skipping. <laughs> May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. When we get to Monday, Thursday, and when we have the ceremony of the foot washing, although it's all very biblical all get a little uncomfortable. None of us are particularly fond of feet. None of us particularly want to expose our feet, and none of us want to have someone else kneel and wash our feet. And yet that's exactly the point that Jesus makes as he gathers with his disciples in that upper room and they share in the Passover meal. So they gather, just like we did earlier, and they had a meal together, just like most of us did earlier. Then there was the unfolding of the events that were going to happen that evening, and as all of this unfolded, Jesus stood before them, and he humbled himself like a servant, and he said to them, this is a barrier that has to be broken. One is not better than the other. And when we serve one another, we are a servant church. And when we are a servant church, we are humble. And when we are humble, we will do the humblest of things for each other. And so he says, let me give you an example. And he insists on washing their feet. And did you notice? No one was excluded. Judas, too, had his feet washed. When they had supper, Judas, too, was included. And when we come to Monday, Thursday, we're asked to look at those hard places, those places in life where it's hard for us to reach, hard for us to go, hard for us to forgive, hard for us to serve. We're good at the Eucharist. That's easy. We're good at the Eucharist. We've taken it. We've made it ours. And it's something that we do as a ritual on a regular basis. And we do it because it's meaningful. But it's also easy. This is the harder part. The servanthood is the harder part. And yet that is exactly what Jesus calls this church to be. Calls us as his followers to be servants to each other, servants to the people we encounter. 
And when we wash our feet, probably one of the hardest working pieces on us, when we wash our feet, when we wash the feet of others, he says we enter into that servanthood, humbling ourselves just like the lowest person in the scheme of things. Just like that lowest servant in the scheme of things. And we offer everything of who we are and what we are to God. And so when we come to commemorate on Monday, Thursday, all that Jesus did, we don't just commemorate the highlights and the good parts that we're comfortable with. We highlight the hard parts as well. We highlight not just the communion and what happened on this night, but we highlight the importance of being servants. And we highlight the importance of including those that we would otherwise really wish to exclude such as Judas. And yet Jesus says, everyone gets included. Everyone. Regardless of the role that they're going to play, regardless of what's going to come after, everyone gets included. And for most of us, for most of us, that's not an easy concept. It's not an easy concept to say that I am going to be a servant for the work of God, and that means I have to allow everyone to come, even though that's hard for us to welcome in. And yet that's exactly what Judas, what Judas shows us in the example that he gives in the role that he has to play. And more importantly, it's the role that Jesus shows us that we are called to. The inclusion of all, the barriers come down. The master becomes the servant. Betrayal happens. Crucifixion comes. Death. And without any of it, there could be no resurrection and no Easter Sunday. So when we consider the words that we just heard from the Gospel reading, when we consider the ritual that is going to follow in a few short minutes, we're asked to consider from ourselves, are we giving our all to Jesus? Our servanthood, our humility, our willingness to humble ourselves to receive the foot washing so that it, became, it can be given so that we too take on the mantle that Christ gives to us the mantle of servanthood so that we take ourselves from here and we go out to bring that good news wherever our feet take us with whoever we encounter to take that good news to those that are waiting for us and the people that we encounter on a regular basis or a sporadic basis or a once in a lifetime basis it's the servanthood that the church is called to but it is the one we often forget. It is the humbling of ourselves that we're called to express. And sometimes it's hard to allow that to happen. And yet on this night, on this very night, that is exactly what Jesus did. And it is what he calls us to do and to be. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God came not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by lowly service. Therefore, I invite you, who share in the royal priesthood of Christ, to come forward that I may recall whose servant I am by following the example of the Master. But come remembering his admonition, that what will be done for you is also to be done by you to others. For a servant is not greater than the Master, nor is the one who sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them.
on this holy night, we dine together as the body of Christ, and at the table commit ourselves to love and serve one another. On this holy night, then, let us pray for the Church and all humankind. God, our provider, you feed us with the bread of life and lift for us the cup of salvation. On this night, Jesus gave us the holy feast. May all who gather at your table receive a foretaste of the eternal banquet. God of love, grant our prayer. Servant God, on this night, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. May we follow this example of love and service. God of love, grant our prayer. God of compassion, on this night, Jesus prayed for those who would believe through the message of the disciples. May those who gather on this day to renew their ordination vows so live what they proclaim that all may come to know your saving love. God, God of love, grant our prayer. prayer. God of renewal, on this day, oil was consecrated for use in baptism and healing. We pray for all who will be anointed with these holy oils, for the sick and for those preparing for baptism. God, God of love, love grant, grant our prayer. prayer. God, our companion, we pray for those unable to eat at the Lord's table or at any other table, for those who betray and for those betrayed, and for all innocent victims. God, God of love, love, grant our prayer. God of hope, remember all those in need, especially those we silently hold before you now. God of love, Grant our prayer. Holy God, you give us this meal of bread and wine in which we celebrate your great compassion. Grant that we may work with you to fulfill our prayers and to our Redeemer, who is alive with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Brief moment of guilt there. I'll get over it. When that it. happens, you just remain silent like I do, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what he's up to. <laughs> oh, I'm always up to something. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Shirley. Peace be with you, Pastor. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, everybody. What are we doing? Is there something? How about a hug? How about a hug? Peace be with you. Peace. We're going to join in singing our offertory hymn, Red You Have Given Us. I'll get the thing. 
right. There we go. Together we pray. Father, Father we spread this table, table to remember, to remember the, the loving sacrifice of Jesus Christ, Christ your Son. Accept all we offer you this day, bind us together in his love, and, and in the love he has commanded us to bring one another, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, who for our sins was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself. By his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, with all the hosts of heaven who gather around your throne and the Lamb, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, Lord, our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the woman Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On this very night, when he was handed over to suffering and death, the death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. <laughs> this bread communion in Christ's body once broken let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying if we have died with him we shall live with him if we hold firm we shall reign with him these are the gifts of God for the people of God 
Thanks Thanks be be to God.
Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment, to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment in our hearts. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, who gave his life and died for us, yet is alive and reigns to you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 